This is a video for how to go about utilizing geometric constraints in Fusion 360. To utilize geometric constraints, we're going to come up to Create Sketch, and we're going to choose for ourselves a sketch plane. Now, I could just come out and click on this plane right here, which is the XZ plane, but I want you to notice that in your origin folder, you can click on whatever plane you want by just utilizing that folder. I'm going to click on XZ, and we're going to turn, and we're going to see our origin right here. And I want you to notice that I'm in millimeters. So for this sketch, we need to be in millimeters. So you can come up here to your little arrow and change the units to millimeters. You need to do that before we start. And to start, we're going to click on the line command, and we're going to snap to our origin. And I'm going to drag to the left. And I just want you to draw a line about this distance. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I want you to draw a line up that's a little bit crooked just about like that. And you're going to notice the line is blue. And that means it really doesn't have a geometric constraint set to it yet. The only geometric constraint it has is that this point meets the end point of this horizontal line. That's all it has. Now what we want is this line to be perpendicular to this horizontal line. And we're going to come up to the perpendicular geometric constraint. Click on perpendicular, click on our blue line, click on our black horizontal line, and we see that perpendicular constraint icon show up. Next, let's click on the line command, and we're going to click on our endpoint. We're going to drag to the right, and we can automatically see that perpendicular box show up. Let's go ahead and drag, and we're going to click, and automatically a perpendicular icon shows up. We don't have to place icon, or excuse me, constraints from the constraint toolbar up here, but it's automatically going to infer some of our constraints. Now, remember, we're still in blue here because I haven't really given it too much of a distance. And this one is snapped to, an or to a grid line. It's snapped to our x-axis. So it's going to be black. These will eventually change as we go on. I want you to notice that I can drag these along any distance that I want in sketch mode. I haven't gone up here and gone to um, a dimensional value yet with a number. We'll get into that later. But I want you to notice that I'm able to go in and you know just draw and use geometric constraints as we go. Our next step will be from this endpoint. We're just going to draw up a diagonal line like this. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw up a vertical line. And we're just going to draw over, but I want you to make this, you know, just barely not horizontal. I'm going to draw a crooked line on purpose. And this line is more horizontal than it is vertical. So I can come up to the horizontal vertical constraint, click on horizontal vertical, and I want to click on this line. And automatically it's going to shift horizontal. Now, if I by chance drew myself a line, you don't have to draw this line. Don't draw this line. But if I come up, you know, just kind of off vertical right here, Fusion knows that this is more vertical than it is horizontal. And when I click, it's going to snap vertical for me automatically. So sometimes people will draw a line and it's just barely off. And I'll notice, well, I don't see any kind of a constraint on it. Let's come up to horizontal vertical and see if we can lay it flat or stand it up straight. And that's what works. Now, you can use the horizontal vertical um, geometric constraint for other uses. One of the things we want to do is make sure that this point right here lines up vertically with the origin. Now, you could drag over and be like, yeah, it's lined up, but you don't know that for sure. We want to make absolutely sure that these points line up. So we're going to go to vertical constraint, and we want to click on our origin dot down here. I'm going to click on that dot, and I'm going to come up and click on this dot or this end point and click. And now automatically, we have these points lined up. It will guarantee that we have for ourselves a vertical line right here. Next thing we want to do, we're going to click on the line command, and we're going to click on this point, and we're going to come down to the next point. And you're going to notice automatically this highlights in blue because now it recognizes it as a surface area. Now this line is not going to be part of the finished sketch that we're going to do. So we're going to click on this line, and we're going to come over to construction. And we're going to make that a construction line. And you'll notice that that kind of blue area went away because when you use a construction line in Fusion, it says, oh, so this is not part of the sketch. So this right here is not a closed sketch, if you will. If I poured water inside of here, the water would leak out and go all over here on this side of the screen. So I'm going to drag up just a little bit. I want you to follow along with me and just do this. Click on your, your I call these joints sometimes when I teach, you know. Click on your joints and kind of drag them around. And we can even drag this out this way. And notice we haven't gone up and put any numbers in yet. This gives us an idea. You know, I have a general idea what the shape's going to be of what we're going to use. And I'm going to keep it about like that. Good. What we're going to do now is we're going to mirror. And what we did on the left-hand side, we want to put over on the right-hand side because we want this to be symmetrical. So we're going to go to the Create tab. And we're going to go down to Mirror. And Fusion's going to ask us, what objects do you want to mirror? Now, I can go through and click on every one of these lines. You know, I could go through and click, but I don't want to do that. What I'd rather do is just drag a window over the top of everything. So over here, I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag myself a window. 
over the top of the lines that I want to mirror. And it says 11 selected. Now there's not 11 lines, but it's taking all of these geometric constraints with it as well. We're going to go to mirror line, click on our construction line, and you're going to say OK. And it mirrored. And notice how you have that blue area inside now. And you also have something here in the middle that denotes symmetry. And that is part of the symmetry geometric constraint. We have the same on the left as we do on the right. So this object right here, you know, if we know we have an object that has symmetry and it's going to be the same on the left as it is on the right, we only have to draw one half of it and then use the mirror command. Because now, if I drag this in, the other side's going to come in as well. If I drag this part, I'll drag this line up, the whole thing's going to come up too. Cool. So now we're going to go ahead and start placing some dimensions on the object. Now down here at the bottom, we're going to place the 100 millimeter dimension. So I'm going to go back and we're going to go to sketch dimension. And we're going to go from left to right. I'm going to drag down to 100 and hit enter. Now look at what happened here. Oh man, that looks really weird. And you're right, it does. I'm going to drag this in just a little bit. I'm going to drag these sides in. I want you to notice what I'm doing here. I can drag this in. I can drag this part up a little bit if I want to. This will look super tall and like kind of skinny. But I'm glad when these things happen because if this comes out like this, you're like, oh, do I have to redraw it? No, just click on your joints. Just drag them in a little bit. And we can make this, we'll bring this in and make it like even skinnier. Now this right now, it, when we look at something like this, automatically you're like, well, I don't know what you were doing. I mean, it doesn't look anything like that right now. It eventually will once we set everything up the way that we want to. Next, let's do the 15 millimeter dimension over here on the side. I'm going to hit escape here. Dimension, side. 15. Enter. Now you can kind of see this is starting to take some form of a shape. So once you have the general shape made, then we can go in and start worrying about more dimensions. Up at the top, we're going to do that 20. I'm going to go from here to here. It's going to be 20. I'm going to hit enter. Let's go back. 15 down from the top. Let's do that first. So we're going to go to dimension. We're going to say from here to here is 15. That's going to make a big difference. Now, the next dimension that we look at is 45, top line to bottom line. Let's go back. We're still in dimension. Top line to the bottom line. I'm going to drag out from the 45. Now, let's come back and look at the object. Now, as we look at it, you might say, you know, well, this doesn't look exactly like it. We're just going to kind of drag out here on these sides. And as I drag out, I can kind of give myself a little bit of an idea of what these lines are. You can see those lines are not necessarily fully constrained. They aren't. So that's fine. We're just going to leave them where they are because one of the things about designing is, you know, we can come in and we can say, you know, I want our design to look more like, like this or like that. We can change however we want it to. We can even say, you know, this right here, the distance from here to here is always going to be a certain amount of a distance. So look, I can go, you know, from here to here. And if I drag up, that's 16. And I can say, you know, this is always going to be D1 divided by 6. I'm just making up a number. And I hit Enter, automatically it's always going to adjust to whatever the width is. So if 20 up here, I can come in and change this and say, you know, this is always going to be this divided by 5. And automatically I have a function. So if I come down here to the bottom and I say, you want to know what? Actually, that's 95 and hit Enter. We still have some proportional relationship in the width. We're going to go ahead and keep that. Next thing we're going to go back to here is we're going to draw some circles right here. We're just going to draw some circles underneath these points. And one of the neat things about geometric constraints in Fusion is if I click on my circle here, I'm going to zoom in just on this side, and I'm not going to click, but I'm just going to reference that coincident constraint. It's two lines touching each other, this end point. I'm not going to click, and as I drag down, I can just go ahead and drag down, and I'm going to reference the center point over here. Now notice what I did. I just referenced. I am not clicking at all. I'm just dragging my mouse. I'm just going to drag my mouse here. And I'm just going to drag my mouse to the left. I'm going to see that black line show up. And you can see there's a diagonal line that shows up. And then right here, I'm going to see those two points converge. We're going to click. And we're going to hit the number 5. We're going to hit Enter. That is always going to be lined up a horizontal constraint from here to here. Lined, excuse me, a vertical constraint from this point to this point, And a horizontal constraint from the midpoint to here. Same thing on the opposite side. We're going to click on circle. Reference the point. We're not clicking. 
reference the point over on the side. We're going to get for ourselves a vertical and a horizontal constraint. We're going to click, hit 5, and hit Enter. The other thing that we can do, I can just double click on this 5 and tap on the number over here and hit Enter. And automatically, these will always function as one another. So within our object, let's just say, for the sake of discussion, that we want to change some of these numbers. Now we have our constraints all completely done. We can go in and, you know, change this 45 to, let's change the 45 to a, you know, a 75. Remember, you're looking at a, what when you are updating anything, sometimes it'll take a second because you're, you're um, designing within a cloud. So you're, sometimes your internet connection can be part of it. Now see, you know, I want to push this down a little bit. Let's go to 25. We can always go in and change our design, but the benefit of what we're, what we're learning right now is that these geometric constraints force everything to snap together and they force everything to have a function. So a lot of times people want to come in and just start sketching out of the create toolbar and they don't want to worry about geometric constraints. And then they wonder why when they go back and change the numerical values of the dimensions of why things all of a sudden, you know, get out of joint. It's because they don't have geometric constraints done. So for this particular object, I'm just going to go to finish sketch. And I'm going to go to extrude. And notice we have one object now because we use that mirror command. And, you know, I'm just going to say, you know, this is going to be a new body. Now let's go back about five millimeters and hit enter. And we have for ourselves a nice little frame here. So this has been a video for how to go about utilizing geometric constraints in Fusion 360.